All right. We are coming in loud and clear. Howdy doody to everyone out there. It is a nice Sunday afternoon here in Buffalo. Beautiful time, actually. Hey, Ceresa, how's it going, buddy? Nice of you to catch the stream. Give me a few minutes while I prepare a few things here. For some folks, this may be their first time playing uh, Bayonetta 2 Tag Climax with me. And for some, it may be the first time they play Tag Climax altogether. Um, so I'm going to try my best uh, to sort of move things along, depending on how many people actually want to join up today. I'm almost certain that not a lot of people are going to want to join because, you know, everyone's kind of busy on a Sunday, which is understandable. Uh, so I'll try to move things as best as I can, you know? Oh no, Dante Black. Um, I very much like Bayonetta 3 way more than 2. However, Bayonetta 2 is the only game that has online multiplayer. So, part of what makes these streams fun is when I'm able to invite other people to tag along with me. It's unfortunate, but it's unfortunate that Bayonetta 3 never offered online multiplayer. It surprises me that they never included it. I feel like they could have done something where Player 2 could play as the Demon Slaves, while Bayonetta is controlled by another player and the two can work in tandem. I feel like that could have been a pretty cool system. You know, kind of like how... Astral Chain has a multiplayer feature where the person can be the cop while the other player can be the Legion. That could have been pretty cool for Bayonetta 3, but they never implemented that. I don't know why. It's a shame they never really did anything interesting with, with that, you know? Hey, Drazer! Buenas, lo siento, no pagué el online este año, así que solo miraré. Suerte a todos. Ah, oh. ay, lo siento que, que eso te pasó a ti. Yo entiendo que la gente no, no, no pueden pagar por este servicio cada año. No me gusta que Nintendo pone ese servicio que tienes que pagar. Yo entiendo. Ah, uh, it doesn't really matter how you want to play. What's more important to me is that we both survive. Whether you want to be the one to carry the game or you want me to carry the game makes no difference to me as long as we make it to the end. I prefer that we actually finish matches rather than the both of us dying and we have to start all over again. You know what I mean? <laughs> Okay, um, damn, I really should trim my beard. I'm looking at the camera and my beard is kind of a mess. I'm either going to have to trim it or just cut it off and let it grow again. <laughs> it's kind of an ugly, shabby mess. I think the real big mistake that I did was not bringing my uh, razor equipment. I left that to my brother because my brother started to learn how to shave on his own and I said I would buy my own set but I haven't been able to find a good set around here. A lot of them is just like really crappy shit, you know what I mean? It's Spanish, not Portuguese, don't worry. I hail from El Salvador, but I was born in California. Okay, so I, I want a head count, actually. Like for those of you that are watching the stream and you want to join, uh, let me know who is up. I want to get a head count. I know Ceresa wants to join. I know, hold on. Let me see who actually wants to join. Benny, I know Benny wants to join. So Benny, Ceresa, and Umbrin Swat, the three of you want to join so far. That's the head count. And I know Benny was the first one to ask and he said that his username is okay. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is, because uh, Bayonetta 2's matchmaking is kind of stupid. It's not like, it's not like most normal games where you can set up a lobby and then a person joins up. 
for this to work i have to play with a cpu and then other players have to find me or we could do it the other way around if you guys want to uh you guys set up a match with a cpu and and, and then i will look for you guys because that's the only way it works you have to be in the middle of a game for me to find you you get what i mean how do you guys want to approach this would you prefer that i host with the cpu and you guys find me or do you guys want it where i find you super important because like i would prefer if i find you guys because the problem with you guys finding me is that everyone's going to be fighting for my name because i know someone's going to jump in and try to get there first before the other one does so i kind of want to have it where you guys are fighting with the cpu and i go look for you guys you know what i mean oh vanquish is really really good i actually intend to stream that in the future because like the last stream that i did for it was god awful but i have since gotten way better at the game i actually know how to do all the really cool tricks now like i mean i did that i did that stylish mad video a long time ago so i have improved since the first day i played the game okay so what you're gonna do benny since you're the first one that asked um you want to go to the online menu and then play with the cpu and then match up with the cpu and start playing with the cpu and when you're doing that i should be able to find you and you said your your switch name is okay like literally okay <laughs> i find it funny that that's what you decided to call yourself Single file, everyone. Seatbelts, everyone. Oh, please let this be a normal field trip. What the frizz? No way. <laughs> Don't mind me. Gonna have myself a little Granny Smith apple. I love Granny Smiths. I main, I main most of the heavies. Let's see. For the tanks, I play primarily as Roadhog. On some occasions, I play as Wrecking Ball. And then rounding out the last bit of that is uh, Reinhardt. Uh, for, for healing or support, I guess, I play as Moira. On some occasions, I also play as Lucio, but I always have a tough time playing as him because I'm not that good at movement. I prefer being the tanky slow one as long as I can pummel someone down without dying so easily. And then for damage, well, I don't know because I know some characters got changed in the categories and I know the categories of Overwatch has changed since the day I first played. Because I haven't been keeping up with with Overwatch 2. As a matter of fact, when I played Overwatch 2 for the first time, it was a week ago. And I was surprised at the complete rework that they did for Roadhog. But I think May is now a damage character. Am I right or wrong? Regardless, I also like playing as Mei. So my top characters in order is Roadhog, Wrecking Ball, Moira, Mei, Reinhardt. But if you guys need me to swap to a particular other character, I'm open to other choices like Bastion and, um, and Mercy, although <laughs> I'm not so good as them. Yeah, May is considered a damage character now, right? Forgive me for not keeping up to date with Overwatch, because I used to be obsessed with Overwatch until the sequel came out. After that, I just sort of gave up, because it's like, there was no reason for you guys to do an Overwatch 2, and the shit that you guys did with Overwatch 2 is garbage. 
but I'm slowly easing my way back in. The game is still fun, it's just the practice surrounding Overwatch is total garbage. What I hate is how the devs have always focused on trying to make the game competitive for the hardcore players while not making it as much fun for the casuals. You know what I mean? Because I don't consider myself a casual Overwatch player, but I also don't consider myself a pro Overwatch player. I play mainly for fun, so I always do unranked matches. But what I hate is how in unranked matches, it still feels like everyone is sweating their balls off trying to win that fight. And fuck, I hate that whenever I play and I'm struggling, I always get those chats where everyone gets mad at me going, Switch to Reinhardt, you piece of shit, we're losing. And it's like, dude, it's a fucking game, relax. Okay, so, Benny, I assume you're already playing with the CPU. Let me know if you are playing with CPU. Like, I'm, I'm trying to look for someone here and there's nobody on the list. <laughs> It's just dumb to me that they made Overwatch 2 with the promise that it was going to have a story mode. And then when the game came out without story mode, they told us, oh, it'll be in an update. And then eventually they told us, oh, sorry, it's canceled. So it's like, the reason you made Overwatch 2 isn't even here anymore. What the fuck? It's really funny how it all just fell apart. But what's shocking is that despite all this shitty practice, Overwatch still shines. Because, you know, underneath all this horrible business executive decision lies a game that is genuinely solid good. Oh, you are? Hold on. Okay, I see you. Awesome. Finally. Alright. So, you're going to get a message that says I'm... Um, I'm requesting to fight. All you got to do is respond and select that you are willing to. I mean, from the very beginning, like Overwatch had a lot of promise. And I remember I bought it day one because my friend was really excited to play it and we were all jumping in. We all bought it collectively so that we could play in teams. And it became fun, but as time went on, it just got worse and worse with all these updates. Okay, buddy. Let's do this. We'll start it off pretty easy with one star. Yo, nice! There we go! Let's go! Dunk! 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 God, I forget how tanky some of these enemies really are. It takes forever to kill them. I mean, it doesn't help that I'm using the classic Scarborough, Scarborough Fair weapon set, which, by and large, is pretty weak in Bayonetta 2. Oh, you're being filtered on Twitch? Oh my god, I don't know why that's happening. I am so sorry. Come join the YouTube side. <laughs> I 
The funny thing, you know, Leon, it's funny you say this about the legends, but I actually have every character unlocked purely by luck. Like, I need to, I need to check and see how I got all the characters. Like, each character, I got it through very interesting situations. Like, I know for, um, for Kiriko, someone on my Discord group was like, Hey, I got this code for Kiriko on Xbox. Does anyone have the Xbox version of Overwatch? And I was like, I have it. I'll take it. So I got, that's how I got Kiriko, which is funny because I do have Overwatch on Xbox. But the best thing about the, the, the Battle.net uh, service is that it all links together. So I got Kiriko on all versions of Overwatch. Then for the other character that was available, um, I'm trying to forget, I'm, I'm trying to remember who the other character was. But it was another character that I got as a gift from a friend. Sort of in a similar scenario where I, I got the code from this guy from Xbox only, this time it was for the PS4. I was like, okay, I'll take that. And so little by little, I ended up getting all these characters purely by chance, which I thought was kind of funny. I barely play Overwatch and I managed to get all the characters by pure dumb luck just because people had these pa these keys but people don't have as much consoles as I do. I have a PS4, I have an Xbox, I have a I have a 360, I have a Wii, I have a PC, I have a Switch. Oh, um okay, it's your turn to pick a stage by the way. Since you won that fight, you get to pick. Destroy the ever loving hell out of this dude with my gauntlets! Your breath stinks! Get out of here! I'm surprised you don't have a, a switch, Leon, considering how much Bayonetta talk we've done before. But to each their own. I know that there are people that prefer Bayonetta 2 a lot, which is totally fine. Of the oh, you mean like in terms of costumes in in Bayonetta 2? Because I prefer playing as Sunday outfit Bayonetta. So much fun. When I was hanging out with my friends, all my friends would make these jokes by calling her Driving Miss Daisy Bayo or Driving Miss Bayo, which has always been my favorite nickname for this character. Donk, 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 kick. What's that? You want more dunks? Okay. We can rearrange that. Donk, 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 donk. This is so fun. Ah, shit. Wow. And he's just about dead. He's got a little bit of health and he teleported somewhere else. And he died. Awesome. The Nintendo outfits are pretty cool, admittedly. 
Like, I, I love that that was Platinum's way of thanking Nintendo and for, you know, giving themselves a nice inaugural um, debut on a Nintendo platform. I always thought that was pretty cool. I do wish we could get more Nintendo outfits. I remember they had an interview with um, with one of the Nintendo magazines where they said that they really didn't want to explore Nintendo costumes for Bayonetta 3, which I, I think it's a crying shame they didn't do it, but at the same time, I kind of understand why they would go against it. But I feel like they, they really should explore more with Bayonetta costumes from other franchises. Like, imagine Bayonetta with costumes that celebrate Platinum Games in general. Like, her wearing the Sam outfit from Vanquish. That'd be pretty freaking cool. Or how about um, uh, a Bayonetta costume that makes her resemble her Wonderful 101 form. Because, you know, she's in Wonderful 101 with a unique costume where she wears the, one, the Wonder mask. I feel like that could be pretty damn cool. I'm noticing that Twitch is becoming a little bit more strict with some of their words. I mean, in case you didn't realize, the reason I'm calling this stream a tag clamato is because climax is a banned word. Like, you can't say climax on Twitch. Oops, I just said it. But that's why I've just called them clamatos, because I don't know. I, I prefer that word because it's fun to say clamato. Tag clamato. The only other word I like saying is hug bees. It's fun to say hug bees. Say it out loud. Say it proud. Hug bees. <laughs> Want more dunk? You got it. Dunk, 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 dunk. I can go feral with the dunks. Let's do it again! Actually, no. Let's do some kicks instead. Kicks! Kicks! Kick! Kick! Now another dunk. Actually, I ran out. No! Ooh! More dunks! Awesome! Dunk! Dunk! And it ran out already. Oh, that's a shame. He's almost dead. He's almost dead. There we go. If you need to learn how to talk to a lady, I can't believe the word weapon is a banned word. Because, I mean, weapon is a typical thing you see in video games. I mean, heck, Splatoon, a game made for kids, has little inklings using what are essentially weapons. Like, what other word can you describe these things and make it friendly for Twitch to, to allow? What the fuck, man? <laughs> oh, is that what it is? So because I'm doing multi-streams, that is so stupid. Like, you think Twitch would be smart in allowing people to say some things especially when i mark this as you know a video made for an older audience because you know i'm not exactly kid friendly <laughs> um all right i'm gonna back out i'll send you a friend request and um all right don't worry benny uh, we'll play again in a little short while Right now, I do want to have someone else join in. Oh, don't worry about who won or lost. Like, it... Okay, look, because... So, just so you understand, Benny, when it comes to Tag Climax, it's a cooperative game where you're only battling for Halo count. So, whoever it is that gets the most Halos at the end of the round is, quote-unquote, the victor. But to be honest, because this is a cooperative battle, it doesn't really matter who wins. Because if one of you loses, then the game is over. Well, not really. If one goes down, then the other one's got to resuscitate them so that they can continue fighting. But if you leave that one guy out for too long, the game is over. So it is a cooperative game that just so happens to have a, a competitive element to it. And the only real competition you're battling for is Halo Count. 
And really, the best way to get the highest halo is to just hit the enemies really damn hard, which is why characters like Rodan and Balder are top tier characters in these games because they are all about high hits and damage. Also, Rosa, you didn't lose anything. If anything, the benefit to playing Tag Climax is that you earn Halos here that carry over to your campaign. So, in general, I don't know how I would feel about a versus mode in Bayonetta, because how would you make it work? Because, like, you certainly don't want to have a system where the person can endlessly combo you because let's be honest if we did a versus match and you guys had to fight me you probably would be stuck in an endless combo chain against yours truly and i'm pretty sure you guys wouldn't want that but then how would you try to make it evenly balanced where you can escape a combo but still make the game fun for the players that want to do combos you know what i mean like i kind of like what they did with devil may cry 5 now 5 doesn't have a uh, doesn't have versus battles but it does have a boss battle where you're fighting against virgil and the way that works is if you break virgil's guard you get a few seconds to do some really cool air combos and i think that might actually work for a bayonetta versus mode where you first have to sort of deplete the person's stun value and then where they are stunned then you can go into these air combos for a little bit you know what i mean All right, so yeah, uh, Benny, if you want to, you can join me again in a little bit. You, um, there's not a lot of people watching today, so we only got a small number of people joining up. So now that you had your chance to play, I'm wondering who is next? Who wants to play next? I know Ceresa said she wanted to play. Um, who else? Let me get a head count again. For those of you guys who wants to play, let me know. Give me a heads up and whoever wants to play, I will go out and search you guys in the lobby. Hey, Scamit or Scamit. Honestly, I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry. <laughs> You know what? Umbrin Swat, you're next. What's the name that you use on the Switch? Arcade. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so before I join up with you, let me change my accessories. I'm gonna go ahead and play with Salamandra and Aruna and put in Eternal Testimony. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and search for you. So that's uh, Peachy. We're not looking for Peachy. I mean, the general uh, viewpoint, my general thoughts on Vanquish is that it's one of the most excellent shooter games out there. It's got a lot of tools, a lot of great weapons. Uh, gives you all the leg room so you can sh move around, which is so much fun. It definitely is like Titanfall. The difference though is that Titanfall 2 gives you a lot of verticality movement while Vanquish is more about grounded movement. And yeah, no, I, I agree that Titanfall 2 is a really, really fantastic uh, shooter game. I used to play that a lot on Xbox. I actually did 
I actually did get Titanfall 2 for free on Steam. Is the game still active on Steam? I know there is a single player mode in the game, but I definitely would like to try to play uh, some Titanfall 2 online matches at some point in the future. Assuming the game is still active. Alright, I sent you a request, Arcade. Okay, so RK gets to select. Make it a good one. Yeah, no, not that one. <laughs> I like how we always do random to see what we get, and then we're like, nah. I mean, when it comes to PC gaming, there's always going to be hackers. I mean, it's, it's whatever. I don't care. I've dealt with hackers before, and it's like, okay, fine, whatever, I'll just jump out and hop into another lobby. I think I won that fight. That I did. <laughs> All right. In that case, uh, let's go random. See what we get. <laughs> Bayonetta and John. No thanks. We'll leave that for the last half of the lobby. You know what? I'm fine with this one. Two stars it is. Bayonetta 3 felt like the Avengers. In what way, though? about eating apples is that sometimes the skin gets stuck somewhere in the back of my teeth and then it's hard to pull it out unless I get a piece of floss. <laughs> so I'm very sorry if I'm making silly facial... I'm sorry if I make silly faces. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, look. Whatever complaint you have about Bayonetta 3, I've, I've heard them all. Yeah, I know that they did John dirty. I know that the story is garbage. I know that they did Ceresa dirty. It's like, been there, done that. I'm sick and tired of hearing all these complaints. Oh no, Granny Smiths are fantastic. They're my go-to snacks. That and tomatoes. I love eating fresh tomatoes. Either I get a whole bushel for me to eat, or I just chop them up, throw in a little uh, avocado. Uh, you know what? Now we'll fight against Bayonetta and Jean. Um, I like, get, like throwing in a little salt, a little onion, some cucumbers, mash it all together with cilantro, and you got yourself a really nice dish called chimol, and it's so damn tasty. Fucking love chimol. How is it that I can still see what is going on while we have two players, while in Bayo 3 I can't see anything? 
It's because of the way Bayonetta 3 renders things. Bayonetta 3 uses what's called checkerboard rendering, where when things are in view, the characters, like the objects and everything goes into this uh, checkerboard pattering pattern, which sort of dithers everything, which makes it a little hard to see things. And that's mainly because it's trying its best to make sure that the switch doesn't melt when everything's on screen. I forgot how tough this fight can be. Okay, Bayonet is dead, just like in 3. And John is dead, just like in 3. I don't think it was a matter of the game being delayed any further. I mean, yeah, okay, the game was in development hell and they had to cut out a lot of things, but I think it's just a simple matter of them not including it because the new mechanics that Bayonetta 3 offered doesn't lend itself too much to tag climax. Because imagine two characters, two playable characters summoning their own demon slaves, that's gonna melt the switch. I don't think it was. I don't think it was a matter of, oh, they ran out of time and so they didn't throw in multiplayer. I think there's a lot more to it than that. A lot of people will always blame development hell, but I think there's more to it than that. I mean, okay, if you have a mode where you... I mean, the funny thing is, you really couldn't have a mode like that because a large majority of the enemies in Bayonetta 3 require you to fight them with demon slaves. I mean, have you tried taking down the large train monsters? You know, that, that giant centipede creature? It's not fun if you try to fight it without using your demon slaves, I can tell you that right now. Trust me, I've tried playing the game without the Demon Slaves. It's doable, but it takes forever.
Nice. Look, Bayonetta one. Look, I don't want to sit here and and repeat myself over and over and say that Bayonetta one's combat is great. At the end of the day, it's much better for me to say that all three Bayonetta games are great. It's just that each and every single one of them has their strength and weaknesses. Bayonetta one excels at combat. Bayonetta two excels in visuals and the overall pace of the game. Bayonetta 3 excels at giving players limitless options in tandem gameplay. Puppetry battling. You don't get to see that often in a lot of action games. That's the way I see it. Good job, man. That was great. Alright. So, oh. I thought I had you on my friends list already. Well, okay. No biggie. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, accept that in a bit. Okay, so now that Umbra and Swat finished uh, their participation, who else is next? I know Cereza wanted to join. There was also another person out there. I think his name is uh, Dave Viona. I am so sorry if I mispronounce your name. I think it's Dave Viono. Dave Viono. Again, I, I apologize if I mispronounce your name. Let me know when you are ready, and I will go ahead and seek you out in the lobby. You are ready? Alright, awesome. Let me set up my character first. You've got the right eye for talent. This time, let's go with Shiraba and Chain Chomp. Actually, no, hold on. Let's do Rakshasa and Chain Chomp. Yeah, I'm still waiting on Project GG, but it's going to be a long time before that game is ever ready. Because I know Kamiya was the one heavily involved with that game, but now that he left Platinum Games, I feel like Project GG is going to be reworked into something completely different. So, ugh, it pains me to say that Project GG is probably not going to be the game we want it to be. Especially with Kamiya out of the picture. And it makes me real sad to know that Kamiya only ever got to direct three games while working with Platinum Games. Bayonetta. Wonderful 101 and Soul Cresta. I was really hoping for more. I mean, it's sad that it ended up like this, but I do look forward to Kamiya's future. After the year is over and Kamiya gets back to work, I do hope that we get to see some great stuff out of that guy. And hopefully he teams up with a great uh, company. Okay. Let's do it, buddy. I mean, yeah, look, development help definitely plays a part in everything, especially with everything we know about Bayonetta 3. But I still think some, some things don't always have to be attributed to development help. There was definitely a vision that Platinum Games wanted with Bayonetta 3 from the very start. You know, the whole Demon Slave mechanics, you gotta remember, that was all pilfered from Scalebound. After Scalebound was cancelled, Platinum Games really didn't want the mechanics of that game to go to waste. Knowing that Scalebound wasn't going to come back at all, they wanted to figure out a new way to use that stuff, and that's why it moved over to Bayonetta 3. Nice! Woohoo! That was clean! 
So Project GG was a game that Platinum Games announced a long time ago. They announced it around the same time when Bayonetta 3 was announced. It was supposed to be Kamiya's new directed game. It was supposed to be the trilogy of... It was supposed to be the end of Kamiya's superhero trilogies. Starting with Beautiful Joe, then Wonderful 101, and then GG. Beautiful Joe was the common Rider. Ba I mean, not Bayonetta. Wonderful 101 was the Super Sentai, so Project GG was gonna be Ultraman. But alas, we'll never see how that game would have turned out. Well, under Kamiya's vision, specifically. I wouldn't mind a uh, a Bayonetta Origins sequel, to be perfectly honest. I thought Bayonetta Origins was really good. almost dead these enemies are just so fucking tanky there we go oh i got hit at some point i wasn't even paying attention to that <laughs> oh platinum games would be more than capable of making an amazing kaiju game but to be perfectly honest i don't think they're in any position to do that now like, don't be surprised when you start seeing more mobile games out of Platinum Games, because that's the direction they want to go in. Because they don't have the budget to make these games the same way they do when they work with other publishers, now that they are an indie company. I talked about this in one of my streams, but people are having extremely high expectations for Platinum Games. But because Platinum Games are becoming, an, well, they have been for a while in indie developers, you know, there's going to be this horrible cycle where people are going to get really mad at the vision that Platinum Games wants to go with simply because it's not what the fans want them to do. But it's kind of the position that Platinum Games are forced to be in because they just need the money to be... They just need the fundings to be able to make these bigger games. The plan that they have is that they want to make these uh, live service games through mobile so that they could get some money on the side so that they can then be able to fund that for the bigger games that people are more accustomed to seeing. Whether or not they do a great job of doing that, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to wait and see. And I know people don't like the idea of mobile games, but that's just how it is. That is the bigger market these days. I know people got really mad when those guys at the at the Blizzard at the BlizzCon said, "You don't have phones." It's because you know. As obnoxious as it sounds, that is the bigger market that we have these days. Do I think it's the best option? No, of course not. I would love to see more big budget games on these consoles and PC, but Platinum Games are not in that position right now. And you know what's weird? We have yet to see the project that they're supposed to be working on with the fundings that they, that they got from Tencent. You know, so we don't know what's going to be happening there. The problem with Babylon's Fall, and I keep saying this over and over and over again, because I hate when people keep telling me that, oh, the live service was the problem. No, Babylon's Fall didn't die because of live service. It died because the game was just boring as fuck. Like, I don't care if a game has microtransactions or live service or some shit like that. If the game is fun, that's all that matters to me. The problem with Babylon's Fall is that it was a game made by Platinum Games, but it doesn't feel like anything made by Platinum. 
It doesn't have the cool combos, it doesn't have the cool tech, it doesn't have all the great stuff you can expect out of them. It doesn't have any of the great combat, it just feels slow and boring. The fact that it's live service is completely unrelated to that. But you know, that's the scapegoat that people are going to be using these days. Oh, it failed because of live service. They should not make live service because Babylon's Fall was terrible. It was just terrible because it was boring. Every time I played Babylon's Fall, I kept falling asleep. That's, a, that's, that's what I really hate about the circumstances surrounding Babylon's Fall, man. I can't talk about it online because then people are going to say, oh, that's a, that's, a, that's a lesson on how not to do games. And you're technically right. But the lesson here is make the game fun before you decide to make mac microtransactions. Because, I mean, fuck. Overwatch is doing just fine despite everyone hating the microtransactions because at the end of the day, the main bulk of the game is still fun. That was the problem with Babylon's Fall. It wasn't fun. Origins was the only reason Three Story could make, be made sense of. Yeah, yeah. But I have a feeling they kind of knew it, so they had to sort of figure out a way to circumvent everything around Origins so that it would make more sense. Because I know the developers knew that it was going to be controversial. And no amount of DLC is going to fix that. Because I know that's what everyone keeps begging Platinum Games to do. A DLC where they fix the story. They're not going to do that. Because Platinum Games are doubling down on this story. You know what I mean? I don't mind if Platinum Games decides to make a gacha game. Again, as long as it's fun. I could imagine an amazing Platinum Games game where it's this amazing combat system that only gets better when you unlock few, um, all these things through gacha. You know, I mean, Genshin Impact is popular. I feel like Platinum Games could take a lot of cues from Genshin Impact in terms of making a really fun, you know, live service game. Because Genshin Impact has plenty of influences from Platinum Games. Much to my own dismay. Because I know that there was that one witch character that came out. This this mage girl with the glasses and everyone's going, <gasps> Bayonetta reference! Can you tell? Because she has glasses! Oh my god, you beat me by four points. Crazy. <laughs> you know, I've never seen a moment where two players tied in a game like this. Is it even possible to tie? Damn, that was really close though. Every video game female with glasses is a bayonet at work once. Yeah, bruh. You said exactly how everyone says this shit on our bayonetta. I swear, I'm sick and tired of it. Not every character with glasses is instantly a Bayonetta reference, nor is it Bayo coded, which is a word I've come to hate more than ever. Okay, uh, Ceresa, that was great. That was really, really, um, wild. You know, I'll send the friend request too. Wait, I, I thought I already had you on my friend request. What the heck is going on here? Okay, so who's next on the list? I'm gonna go ahead and eat an apple while I wait for the rest of the people to join up.
Yeah, no, though, that I agree. Bayonetta is definitely LGBT coded. Yeah, no, that was fun, Ceresa. It's always a pleasure playing with you. All right. What's your Switch name so I can find you? You know what? I'll keep my Rakshasa on Chain Chomp. Actually, no. Hold on. I'm going to change my Rakshasa for one sword instead. What's your Switch name? Okay, so go ahead and set up a match with uh, the CPU. Let me know when you're doing that, and then I'll go out and search for you. In the meantime, who else in this chat wants to play? I hear a lot of people say that it's like the Bayonetta 3 Ceresa is not the same Bayonetta as the first two. But I also see a lot of people say that she is the same one. Honestly, this whole multiverse thing is driving me nuts. Whether or not she is the same or isn't the same doesn't really make that much of an impact on me because I'm still playing as a Bayonetta, you know? You are? All right. I see you. Perfect. All right, let's do this. By the way, how are you guys enjoying this chat? Everything good? Yeah, no, they don't do a great job of explaining things. Supposedly. We're, we're going to be getting more of an explanation in the future with that little message they gave us saying, see you next generation. But what that implies, I don't know. I don't think it was PG copying MCU because truth of the matter is they've always had the multiverse thing in the back of their head since the first game. Because I mean, there's multiple Bayonettas in that one as well. It's just that MCU made the whole thing more popular. Oh, I see you dunking as well. Ah, damn. You know what we should do? Whoever wants to team up with me in the next Tag Climax, please do me a favor and wear the earrings so that we can both dunk on the enemies. That would be kind of fun. <laughs> we could be the Dunk Brothers. Or the Dunk Sisters. Take your pick. Stay tuned for Bayonetta 4 when Viola trips and accidentally stabs John again. Same Bayo channel, same Bayo time. You know, I just realized, well, okay, I didn't just realize it, but I forgot, Bayonetta doesn't actually wield a sword in Bayonetta 3. Because, yeah, duh, it's because Viola is the designated sword artist. 
But it kind of sucks that Bayonetta doesn't get to use a sword in the third game. So I, I completely forgot that her playstyle is pretty different when you're playing as Bayonetta with a sword in Bayo 2. All right. Jesus, take the wheel! You know what? Yep, absolutely. We'll fight against this dude. Oh yeah, no, the hit reactions in this game is fantastic. I will give Bayonetta 2 that. The animation quality in this game is superb. If there's one thing Platinum Games is really good at is animation telegraphing when it, for these enemies. Like, even Chase of Tech brought it up in one of his video essays. Like, Platinum Games are very talented when it comes to animating enemies for the purpose of gameplay design. It's phenomenal. Look at this. Yeah, no, I know why people love Bayonetta 2. It's super satisfying. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really high up. You can't touch me. Come up here with me, my friend. You'll be safe in the air if you could just fight in the air. Ah, shit. I'll save you. Nice. There we go. Dead. With only about a 20 point difference. Yeah, I know. Simoon is the closest you're gonna get to a sword weapon. But to be perfectly honest, it really pales in comparison. It's not a bad weapon. I like Simoon. I, I especially love the Demon Masquerade and the movement options that you get with it. But it just does not hold a candle to Shiraba. Shiraba is... For lack of a better word, it's legendary. Lasers! I hate lasers! Wow, it just fucking depleted. <laughs> oh my god. It was like, yeah! Oh, really? So the person that has the lead gets the victory? Aww. They should have done something special when there's a tie. Like the both of you lose because you guys suck. <laughs> Shiraba's a great weapon. The only real problem with it is that it does not have any projectiles. I mean, unless you want to count the laser, which takes forever to charge up. Ah, jeez. Oh, fuck. Oh, wow. We, <laughs> we suck. <laughs> we suck at this game. All right, let's try it again. Let's try it again. To be honest though, I disagree with the hit reactions on Grace and Glory. I still think their reactions in 1 is way better than what they did in 2.
<laughs> yeah. The problem is, like, Shiraba's not a really good weapon against Racing Glory. Dead. You're making it easy. Oh, I just realized you're Rosa now. Oh wait, you've always been Rosa. What am I talking about? I'm a dork. That's why you have the 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 Umbran armor. What I always like about Wicked Weeds, no matter what the weapon, you always had a bit of range. Yeah, that's what makes Bayonetta very unique. The Wicked Weeds is fantastic. That's why I hate when people tell me that if you turn off the Witch Time in Bayonetta, it makes it just an average action game. I'm like, bruh, it's not average. Even without Witch Time, you still have some of these unique traits that you don't see in other action games. This is in context to the whole discussion I had with someone where someone told me that removing the Witch Time in Bayonetta 1 when you're playing a game on the hardest difficulty is the stupidest thing they could ever do because it just feels like fake difficulty. And I was like, it's not fake difficulty. Like, I understand that Witch Time is Bayonetta's trait and it's something that should remain implemented. But I still think removing it is supposed to showcase that you can get through the game without it. If you get a witch time, launch them into the air. That way they can um, be juggled. Ah, Jesus, hold on. I gotcha, I gotcha, buddy. Oh my god. It has been a while since I've played against Racing Glory and Bayonetta 2, because they're very aggressive in this game. There we go, into the air with you. Some air combos, some juicy air combos. No, why'd you stop him? You bastard! There we go, get out of here. You're making it easy. <laughs> Damn it, I had a good combo going. Hey Shammy, what's up buddy? You haven't missed much, just us goofing around playing online. If you want to join us, you're more than welcome to. Hmm, what would be a really good infinite climax battle? Yeah, I know, Rosa is the ultimate glass cannon. You kind of want to play keep away with her, which is why I don't like playing as Rosa, because playing keep away is such a boring way to play Bayonetta. I mean, I understand people love Rosa because she's tanky, but, like, her playstyle is so against what Bayonetta is supposed to be all about. I'll take the red one. They're going after you. I hate that. Jesus, get over here. Look at me. Look at me, Hector. There we go. Yeah, simultaneous victory.
Also said, I was playing God of War 3 Remastered on PS4 and I launched an enemy in the air and juggled them with an air spin. The reaction animations in that game are nuts. Um, uh, you know, I really gotta get to playing God of War. Someday I will play that game and I would love to stream God of War for you guys. Although I hear that game has graphic nudity. So I would need to figure out a way to skip those parts. Because I've never played God of War, so I don't know when the nudity shows up. This thing is huge! Now it's gonna... Oof. Oh my god! It's so huge, you can barely see it! It's almost dead! There we go! Nice! Nice! I did all the work there. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Rosa is the one carrying me, because holy damn, she hits like a truck. Just puts more important, like, I play as Rosa, just puts more importance on the dodging, which, yes, I understand that. I understand that. Ah, oh, we're going straight to Rodan? Be my guest. Alright, let's do it, buddy. We can destroy this bastard. I think. Oh my god, he comboed me. Jesus! Oh god. I forgot his wicked weeds are nuts. Goodbye, Rodan. Nice. May not be platinum, but better that than to die. <laughs> yeah, I know the newer God of, God of War games are tamer for the casual audience. <laughs> you know, gotta gotta make it more like Last of Us. Gotta make it more appealing for the main public and not the hardcore fans. Okay, look, I don't like shitting on the new God of War games. I know they're really good. It's just, I found it weird that they just decided, hey, let's turn it into this wishy-washy third-person game instead of the amazing combo action juggling that we used to have in the older games. It's just dumb. That's just me, you know. Okay, so who's next on the list? Who wants to play with good old set? While I wait to see who wants to play, let me add these friends. I'm certain the combat in Ragnarok is good. I'm certain. I, I've seen clips of it. I still don't like the direction that they went with it. Huh. It takes a lot of load for some reason. See, I can see these people here. For some reason, the ad friend isn't showing up. Huh. Weird. Oh, well, whatever. Let me try one more time. Come on, load it up. Let's give it a few minutes, see if I get anything. What? Communication error in your friends list? What the fuck? I have never seen that happen to me before. 
Huh. That is weird. Huh. I have never seen that happen to me before. So, there is intentions for me to stream Stellarblade. There is just one little eensy weensy tiny tiny problem. I don't have a PS5. And I don't mind buying a PS5. I just don't want to buy it for one game. You don't need a friend code to play with me. All you need to do is load up Bayonetta 2, run a match with the, with the CPU, and then I will go and look for you. But if you want to know my friend code... My friend code is right here. You can see it right there. As a matter of fact, I'll zoom it up for you guys. SW7321, actually, let me write it down in the comments so that I can get back to the game quickly. 73216421 There it is. I'm sure that if Platinum Games worked on Stellar Blade, it would be, you know, good, instead of what we've seen so far. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll stop shitting on Stellar Blade. Look, for what it's worth, what I've seen from the Stellar Blade combat is, it seems pretty serviceable. It seems pretty fun. I'm certain that in the late game parts of Stellar Blade, the combat will open up and it will be absolutely amazing. But, that all being said, from what I have gathered, talking to other pro players in my Discord group, the kinds of people that actually go to dig deep into the combat depth, it feels like Stellar Blade is very... What's that word I'm looking for? I forgot the word for it, but basically, your actions are very, very committed. You can't cancel in Stellar Blade. There are some cancel options, like you can cancel into your, into your gun, but because there is, there's not a lot of cancels in this game, a lot of the attacks you do are very much the kinds of attacks you have to fully commit to. So if you do a swing on an enemy and you mistime that shit, you will eat that attack. Like if you swing, you're going to see that entire swing animate all the way through. So if you mistime that against a fast enemy, you're in for a rude awakening. And I know, I know, for some people, canceling is not the de facto when it comes to searching for the perfect action games. Because there are games where you have to commit to your movements. Although, it would have been great if we had more cancel options. And again, I must stress that we are only judging the options that we've seen in the demo. Obviously, the demo version of the game lacks all the tools that the final build is going to have. You know what I mean? Sluggish, deliberate, artistic choice, sounds like Dragon's Dogma, you know? Okay, so, who is actually next? I'm waiting to see who wants to play next. I already had my run with uh, Davey Ono. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, sorry. So, who has yet to join up with me? Like, I keep going on a tangent and I keep forgetting that, hey, you know, there are people that want to play with me. I can't even stand Eve's scream during combos. You know, it's really funny because someone on Twitter kept telling me that Eve is a very deep and emotional character because she's always screaming during combos. That makes her very human-like. And I'm like... Okay... 
At that point, you're just you're just grasping at straws, bro. Trying so hard to make Eve sound like a much more interesting character than she actually is. Ah, Shammy. Okay, so what's your name? Like, what's your online name? Oh, before we do this, before we do this, Shammy, I have just one request from you. One request before we tag it together. Can you wear the earrings so that you can go into your Umbern armor? Because I want to do a dual... Uh, what do I keep calling it? I want to do a dual dunk with you. Where we just keep... <laughs> bah, 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 mm, 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 monk, monk, monk. I want to do that. <laughs> I want to see how stupid it looks. All you need to do is jump and press punch when you're in the Umbran armor. That's all I ask. Or if you're going to play as Rosa, that's totally fine too, because you get the Umbran armor regardless of whatever you wear. Ah, oh God. I'm going to go back to Rakshasa, though, because Rakshasa is good at building up. Actually, no, 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 no. I will use... Ugh, it's just it's such a hard weapon to pick out in these bits, you know? Okay. Uh, Alright, I'll find you. Alright, so let me know when you are with a CPU. <laughs> this is going to be so dumb. Shammy, there you go, buddy. Let's do this. Come, my brother. We must dunk in unison. For it is the path to victory. The stream is always going to have delay. I deliberately set it to a delay so that the, the video quality is a little better. Okay. So don't pay attention to the to the stream. Okay, the stream's always gonna have some sort of delay. I have good internet connection, but it's not the greatest. So forgive me. Kaka is a pretty bad weapon. Doesn't have that much damage to it. It's a good support weapon, but not a good weapon on its own. And since you're not able to use two pair of weapons in this game, you're kind of a sitting duck when you're using the Kafka. Dunk with me! Dunk! Dunk! <laughs> Damn it. Oh my god. This sucks. I hate when I get knocked off in the sky. There we go. Nice. <laughs> I can see we're going to have a fun time here. Eh, even with Umberg Climax being powerful, some of these enemies take a long time to kill, though. Especially when you're playing on a higher difficulty. We'll fight against this one. He's pretty easy, even on the highest difficulty. Yeah, no, don't worry. I'm Rusty too, okay? I haven't played Bayonetta 2 in God knows how long. And I'm supposed to be getting back to doing pure platinum videos soon. Dunk with me! Dunk with me! Dunk with me! Dunk! 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 We must revert back to the primate days! Forget guns! Who needs guns when you can dunk? Look at this dunk! <laughs> this is so good. I love this shit. Nice. 
<laughs> I fucking love this. Yeah, no, I, I will eventually get to chapter 10, okay? I, I promise you. I have all the time in the world to do that now. I'm living on my own, all the way in New York. There's nobody here to bother, bother me, so no worries. Now nah, I'll pass on road down for now. Reject girl bossing, return to dunking. Yes, dunk is, is the way of life. <laughs> what's, a, what's a perfect enemy to dunk against? You know what? Oops, 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 oops. Nope, nope. I did not mean to do that. Here we go. This guy is fun to dunk against. Come on and slam, and welcome to the jam. It's the Bale Slam a Jammer. Dunk! 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 More dunkings! Dunk! Dunk! Look at the corner combo! We got him cornered! This is amazing! Keep dunking! For the love of God, don't stop dunking! <laughs> this is amazing. Time to dunk again! Hold on, there we go. Dead. Oh God. That is fantastic. No, no, no. No Sloth. You cannot dunk dunk against Sloth. <laughs> or can you? Can you actually dunk against Sloth? Because Sloth is the kind of character that keeps slipping away from you because of tax evasions or some shit like that. Is Daedron still active in the community? Um, he's not as active, but you can still find him around. Shoot him a message on the crazy groups. I'm pretty sure he'll be, he'll have no issues talking to you. I see him pop around every once in a while, but he's not super active on Twitter, at least. Last I heard, he was pretty busy playing Blaze Blue with some of his friends. Let's find out. Okay, fine. Let's find out. Just for you, we're going to try and dunk Sloth. Oh, shit. No, that was by, that was, hold on. Where, where the fuck is Sloth? I barely fight against him, so I actually have no idea where the hell Sloth is. Hold on. Ah, ah. Where is Sloth? Where is Sloth? Oh, there it is. I'll put it at level 2 for the time being. It is time to test. Here on Mythbusters, we are checking to see if we can dunk Sloth. Time to dunk! Looks like a negative, unfortunately. didn't work. I tried. I really did, but he kept slipping away from me. He kept dodging me like the draft. Your choice, buddy. You cannot you cannot outdunk the sloth. That's a great slogan. That's you selecting that, by the way. Pick whatever you want. Pick what your heart desires.
Time to dunk! Not bad. <laughs> Sorry, I'm boring. It's okay, dude. We're here to have fun. You could pick the hardest enemy in the world or the easiest enemy in the world. It doesn't make any difference. <laughs> We're all doing this in the name of fun. What's this? Balder makes a guest appearance? It's time to dunk him! Almost ready to dunk. On a count of three, we dunk. One, two. I see that meter up there. Two and a half. Three, dunk. Dunk like your life depends on it. Mm, mm. <laughs> Realistically, you think we would still have this game co-op after 10 years, maybe 20 on Nintendo servers? Well, I mean, it'll last for as long as Nintendo decides to keep the Switch servers running. Which means that about 10 years from now, they'll close it in favor of the Switch 2 service. Unless the service from Switch 2 shares the service of what Switch 1 has. You know, that's the thing that sucks about online gaming and consoles. When a console is outdated, the network just ceases to function. I'm sad that you can't officially play online on the Wii and Wii U these days. Really sucks. There was a fan-made project called Umbran Arena PvP, but seems as though it has dwindled away. I heard about that. It's a shame that it dwindled. Local offline will always exist, and I'm pretty certain that Someone out there is going to figure out a way to make private service with Bayonetta 2. Where there's a will, there's a way. I mean, there's already people setting up private servers for Splatoon. And that's because Splatoon has a huge fan base. The real problem with Bayonetta is that the fan base isn't as big as many people are making it out to be. You know, we only have a handful of people that are making these incredible mods for us. Okay, so... Now that we have our fun shammy, and I'm really sorry that we didn't get to do much since I forced you to do this dunking job with me. Uh, is there anyone that wants to join up with me now? Who else is willing to participate in this tag climax? Yep, it's the Eclipse fault that we're losing the Wii U and the 3DS servers. All right, yeah, it was fun. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of people that want to participate now. You know, I don't mind doing repeats. We'll get to repeats soon, but I want to know if there's anyone that actually does want to join. So... If you guys are up for repeats, I'm down for that. I can stream for uh, probably another... Ooh, it's already been about an hour. Actually, no, it's about to be two hours. 
How fun would it be for this game to have a randomizer mod? Ooh, that would be fun, actually. I would be so down for a randomizer. I mean, yeah. PG would love to see Anarchy Reigns on PC, but that is definitely Sega's um, responsibility. And they're not going to do it. To this day, I will never understand why Sega sabotaged Anarchy Reigns the way they did. For those of you who are unaware, uh, Anarchy Reigns was supposed to come out on a particular date. And just two weeks before it was supposed to come out in the US, Sega announced that they were going to delay the game for a whole year for seemingly no reason whatsoever. Even though the game already came out in Japan and it's region free, so people were forced to import Anarchy Reigns from Japan to be able to play the game with all of the Japanese players. And by the time Anarchy Reigns finally came out in the US officially one year later, not many people had as much interest. Sega did mark down the price of the game, but it was already too late. Not a lot of people had that much interest after there was so much hype built around it when they were showing it off at E3. I'll never understand why Sega did this. To this day, that, in my personal opinion, was the dumbest thing they ever did. Delaying Anarchy Reigns for no reason, leaving it to be sabotaged. Dumbest thing in the world. And I just don't know why. So if you ask me, I don't think Sega would be willing to port Anarchy Race to PC, which pisses the ever-loving hell out of me because they were willing to do it for Bayonetta and for Vanquish. But Anarchy Reigns seems like a no-go and it pisses me off. What's even worse is that Anarchy Reigns is one of the few games you can't play on the Xbox One. It should have been a slam dunk for them, for them to allow Anarchy Reigns to be one of the backwards compatibility program, game, program games for the Xbox One. I bet you a million bucks that if it was backwards compatible on Xbox One, there would be a larger community for it. Because on Xbox, you can set up groups where if there's a particular game you like, you can open up a group and have people join in so that whenever you play online, you can announce to everyone that you're playing online. Think of it as Xbox's pseudo Discord group. This was before Discord even existed. And I'm surprised Xbox doesn't capitalize on that because the group system, the groups and club system, in the Xbox One and the Xbox Series X is actually one of the more underrated ways of forming a community around games that exist in um, in the Xbox library. It's kind of like the Wii U's Miiverse to some extent. But yeah, Anarchy Reigns is gone. Oops. Okay, so is anyone actually going to play? Doesn't seem like we have any new people who want to join, so we can do repeats. So, for anyone who played with me earlier, if you want to play again with me, let me know and we'll set it up from there. If not, I have no problems just ending this stream because I know at some point I'm, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to end it anyway because I do got some things to do later today, like doing some some grocery shopping. But I have all the time in the world anyway, because, you know, the grocery store is right over there. Like, it's right around the corner. I'm kind of glad that I live in downtown where everything is available right at hand. I don't need to grab a car. I could just go walking. <laughs> and walking is a lot of fun here in Buffalo. It's cold, but as long as you suit up, it makes no difference than walking around Miami. <laughs> You know what? We could do it in the order. All right, Benny. If that's the case, you are up. Do you want to be Dunk Brothers or do you want to be your own thing? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. No more dunking. I'll change my equipment so that I can use my um 
so that I can use uh, regular Scarborough Fair attacks. Actually, no. Let me change over to Love is Blue. Or actually, no. Someone actually said they want to see me use Kafka. So I will try to use Kafka, even though it's a really, really crappy weapon. Especially in Tag Climax. I'll try. You want to do that? All right, I'll play with the CPU. <clears throat> Go ahead and look for me. What I think about the Takemikazuki? Or Takemikazuchi? I think it's a pretty good weapon. It's a really good support weapon. Has incredible AoE attack, so it really does work when you're playing as a support character to help your other teammate. I keep scratching my nose. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I remember my mom telling me, like, stop scratching your nose while streaming because everyone's going to get weirded out by that. But it's like, I can't help it because my nose is always itching for some stupid reason. I'm already playing against the CPU, but I should warn you, just because um, I'm... The one you're finding doesn't mean that we'll have all the options available. It'll take data from the person that has the fewest amount of cards and take it from there. That way players are not at a disadvantage. See what I mean? Like. Come, my friend. Let us destroy this angel of death. Time to play keep away. I'll save you, hold on. Gotcha. It just seems silly to me that I could just play keep away with this bow and arrow while my teammate does all the work. It's a really boring weapon in Tag Climax, if you think about it. You need to pair it with a really good uh, weapon on your feet. Fun fact, Bayo 2 had its own version of Lieutenant Kilgore, but didn't make it in. I love those rocket launchers. Yeah, I heard about that. It's a shame we never got anything of that variant. We need more explosive weapons in these games. Your turn to pick. Boring. 
I do like her taunt when she's using the Kafka. She'll say, boring. I do wish, and I know this is one of the common complaints of Bayonetta 3, but I really do wish we would have had individual taunts depending on the weapons you wear. For whatever weird reason, that was omitted in Bayonetta 3. I don't know why. They could have had, it, was, it would have been the perfect opportunity to make it where when you taunt, you turn into the demon masquerade of that weapon while you're taunting. That would have been a really great way to make it work. I feel like I should be working at Platinum Games when I come up with some of these greatest ideas stuff. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, okay, if you wanted to give Bayonetta her default taunt for every weapon, that's fine. But it would have been cool where they would have made it where you turn into the Demon Masquerade of the weapon while you're taunting, at the very least, to give some little spice of variety. Yeah, no, I do like the short and the long taunts in Bayonetta 3. They are good. It just sucks that they are the only ones we have. Oh wow, that was a fast attack. <laughs> I'm not really doing anything fancy. All I'm doing is just sitting in the back and shooting. <laughs> Kafka is boring. I mean, look, it's a great support weapon. I keep saying that over and over, but it's like... When push comes to shove, there really isn't much variety with the Kafka weapon in general. Hey, Joseph, didn't I already see you here earlier? Oh yeah, that forgot she has idol cards. God, I hate this particular verse because, my god, you don't get enough enemies to get a good combo score, and the game's requirement for the combo score is too high. You would think that they would have a little boss for you to fight against there, but no, it's just a little mooks. Alright then, so how you doing, Joseph?
at the very least, you can see a good backdrop here. Like, I'm here in the back so you can see the whole fight unfold. I better go help my friend. Your breath stinks. Stop yelling at me. God, this actually tires me. I, and I got a pure platinum for just sitting in the back and shooting. What the fuck is this game? <laughs> Sorry about the long message, but here goes. Since you have already tasted this trilogy in depth, you think it has progressed in the terms of more weapons, enemy eye manipulation, and magic utility? Would you have liked what would you have liked to see it go in this direction? I mean It's hard to say. I like and I dislike the direction that they're going with with Bayonetta from here on out. But I only say that because I don't entirely know what direction Platinum Games wants to go in with Bayonetta. Because a real big problem with Bayonetta 3's magic system is that it had to be reworked completely to make it work within the limitations of the Demon Slave system. Because your magic is tied to the Demon Slave, they made it where instead of having to build up magic and then waste it all with power, you already have a full bar, which kind of works like the wonderful 101's battery system, where you have a full magic or a full battery system, and you're able to fight for as long as you want, as long as you are within your battery limitations, which is what they did with the Demon Slaves. Your magic can only go as far as your bar will let you. Once you run out of that magic, you have to rebuild it quickly until you have a certain amount again to be able to use it. Now this has a lot of pros, but it also has a lot of cons. One big con is the fact that your magic system in the, in the first two games dictated some of your actions, like your heal stomps, your uh, tetizankos, your umbran spear. You could use this as much as you wanted as long as you had the right amount of magic. But because Bayonetta 3 opts for um, auto-gaining magic, you can no longer abuse Tetsuzankas and Heal Stomps. They are, they are not tied to a magic system. So instead, what they did was, they gave you the same Heal Stomp and Tetsuzanko properties with the weaves and everything, but they made them much... I would... How would I say they made them significantly weaker in the long run. Not only that, but they also added a special ability into these abilities where now you hold your Tetsuzanko or your Heal Stomp to get a secondary action. Now that there is no, uh, now that there is no magic for you to be wasting when you're using these abilities. There's also a downside to the Umbran Spear. Like I said, since the Umbran Spear since you could do as much Umbran Spears as you wanted based on how much magic you had, you could just dart around freely. But in Bayonetta 3, because your Umbran Spear is not tied to your magic, they added a limit to the Umbran Spear. And this is the limit that I absolutely hate. I hate this limit. You're only allowed to use one Umbran Spear in the air. If you do one Umbran Spear, uh, Umbran Spear in the air, you have to touch the ground so that you can do another one. So all the really cool darting left and right stuff that you could do in the first two games, it's gone. 
So I have to play in a particular way in Bayonetta 3 where once I use an Umbrin Spear, I have to find a way to cleverly touch the ground real quickly so that I can get my Umbrin Spear ability again. At the very least, what they should have done is made it where you are allowed two Umbrin Spear, but they need to be used for each weapon. Because your Umbrin Spear is based on the weapon you're holding, right? So let's say I do an Umbrin Spear with the hammer or, or G-pillar. Once I use that Umbrin Spear, I can no longer use the G-pillar form. But if I switch to my other weapon, let's say the, the Legolas weapon, then I still have access to one more Umbrin Spear that I can use. Then I'll have wasted everything. I feel like that could have been a much better way of implementing the limit to Umbrin Spear if they wanted to add this limit. But alas, they just gave us the option to do one and only one Umbrin Spear. And that is why I don't like the direction that they're going with with the magic. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of those... You're trading in something good for something great with a caveat attached to it. And when I say something great, I'm talking about the Demon Slave system. Because I actually think the Demon Slave mechanic is great. I actually think it's an astounding ability to Bayonetta's toolkit. It's just such a shame that everything had to be warped around this one system. And um, um, almost all of Bayonetta's abilities had to be reworked with this kind of limitation in mind. It's, it's just weird altogether. I don't think it's bad, but I feel like they could have found a better way to implement this. You know what I mean? My biggest fear with Bayonetta, at least in terms of the franchise of the Bayonetta, is that Platinum Games are probably going to be using Bayonetta as a template to test out new mechanics. Which kind of bugs me because on the one hand, I like when Bayonetta gets new mechanics, but on the, but on the other hand, I wish these are mechanics that could be reserved for a different game altogether. Because could you imagine Wonderful 101 not existing and Platinum Games finds a way to pilfer the mechanics of Wonderful 101 into Bayonetta? It would probably make the game great, but it would be very different for a lot of people and they wouldn't like it. This is the direction that I hope Platinum Games does not take, using Bayonetta more as a testing grounds for new ideas rather than being daring to give us new games with whole new mechanics. Because that was what Platinum Games would used to be all about. But because Bayonetta is their only one franchise that actually sells well, this feels like them using that opportunity to open up stuff they probably couldn't do in other stuff because they don't get the money to do so. I know about Aruna's Demon Masquerade. I know about that. It's still a problem because you're essentially losing one weapon to make it work because you have to have Aruna so that you can get that extra Umbrin Spear. It's cool, but that's more of a quirk for the weapon. You know what I mean? Okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I've been wasting too much time. Who wants to be next, Ceresa or Umbran Swat? Seems like Umbran Swat wants to be next. If that's the case, um, let me go ahead and find you. But before I do, let me change my weapons because I do not want to be stuck with the Kafka. Uh, I am so boring when it comes to my weapon selections. <laughs> Let me go back to being old school with Scarborough Fair. So let me know when you are ready, okay, Umbrin Swat? After Umbrin Swat, then comes Ceresa. And then after Ceresa, probably one more player. And then after that, I can take a break here.
My soup is starting to smell really good. <laughs> I left the... Um, I left my crock pot um, cooking up some meal for me today. Certainly can't wait for my hot soup. Let's see, um, huh. what's an enemy we have yet to fight against? Because I always pick the same ones all the time. I want to try to break out of my comfort zone for one second here. You know what? Let's fight against this dude. I will make it tough though. Hey, beautiful DMC. How's it going, buddy? Nice to see you here again, man. What's up with you, man? Having a good day? Yeah, you're still working on that Chai cosplay. I can't wait. I can't wait to see the, the, the pictures, man. What con are you going to where you're going to be wearing the cosplay? If you don't mind me asking. Momocon, gotcha. Gotcha! Nice. Ah, oh, y'all doing a hi-fi rush group? Is, is, um... <laughs> I hate to um, ask this question, but is one of them going to dress up as Corsica? Because um, Corsica is the best girl, and I want to see more pics of her. <laughs> nice. Tell them that Naro says hi. <laughs> Timing is so off. Oh boy. 
always scares me whenever they do those giant swings. Oh my god. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, hold on. Do you think about what Devastation achieved with its combat system quirks and be possibly expanded? I could totally see them expanding it. My question would be is where could they expand it? Like, they would need to make a brand new game to pilfer a lot of the mechanics that Transformers had. They, uh, I guess maybe Platinum Games can make their own robot mech action game that doesn't have to be tied to uh, Transformers. That's the only way I could see them expanding on what they did with Transformers Devastation. Yeah, you see what I mean? Like, like you should not have chosen Kafka. Yeah, no, Kafka is a terrible weapon, especially when you're fighting against big boss mooks. All you can really do is sit in the back. I'll do my best to protect you. You just stay at a distance. What happened to Project GT? We don't know. All we know is that the game is under com is under new management now that Kamiya left. The biggest question will be if any of what Kamiya's vision or any of what Kamiya had envisioned for Project GG will end up in the final build. I don't think so, but one can really hope, you know. I certainly can't wait for the inevitable time, the inevitable moment when Project GG comes out. And Kamiya plays it, and he says, wow, this game is shit because it's nothing like I had imagined. bugging out because he can't fit in this map even though this map was made for him <laughs> not bad well there's a nexus mod that disables the dodge slow motion and devastation making it like it's its own version of nsic oh that's pretty interesting i should really look into all the mods that transformers devastation has never occurred to me that people would be modding the game today it's a shame the game got delisted, though. I absolutely... Oh, you know what? Let's fight against Al, Ru Al Rune. That was my first option, actually, so... Yeah. Well, oh boy. This might be a tough battle for you, my friend. So, I really, really hope that you can keep a good space between you and the boss.
Oh my god, so much chaos! What is going on? I can't see anything! Express my feelings! And it's dead. Goodbye. Oh, yeah, no. Transformers Devastation was a beautifully optimized game, all things considered. But I think it is also because the game's simple graphics lends itself to having a high performance experience, surprisingly enough. Who would have thought? You know, art style over graphics? Who boy, sure could have fooled me. Let's fight against the spider. Hey, Flight Shift. Oh, you said you wanted to play with us, Flight Shift? We could use some more plays here. here with your giant ass spider Oh my god, I cannot see what's going on here. It's so insane. It's about to die. And it's dead, Jim. I can't believe I took one hit and that costed me a pure plat. What a shame. What a shame. Ah, oh, well, it doesn't matter. We still survived and that's the most important thing here. Oh damn, I won all of these. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Did you expect anything less? Okay, well, if you do want to join us, Flyship, let me know. For now, we're doing some repeats with some of the players that were playing with me earlier. Okay, so who is next? There's definitely one other player out there that said they wanted to play before you came along, uh, Flight Shift. In my opinion, what action game has the best art style? Hmm. Good question. A lot of the newer action games that we're having focuses a lot on having good graphics like Devil May Cry 5 but it's more about looking realistic so its art style is more grounded in its realism okay Ceresa just let me know when you have your lobby set up hey Chrysora what's up buddy great to see you here change my weapon set I want to say uh, I, I know it's gonna sound like I'm being biased here but I think the action game that has the best art style because of its uniqueness 
has to be a toss-up between Beautiful Joe and Mad World. I think Mad World's art style is phenomenal because it manages to work very well with its black and white uh, scheme while still making everything look very distinguishable. So it's not like a messy black and white thing. That's why I really wish Mad World could get an HD re-release, but I don't think it ever will. Okay, so who am I teaming up with? It's not Flight, because Flight said that they'll join up later. Yeah, Ceresa is the one that wants to go next, so I'm looking for Ceresa. There we go. I see you. Beautiful Joe, Hi-Fi Rush, Mad World. Those are exactly the same games I was going to point out. I already said Beautiful Joe, Mad World. I was going to say Hi-Fi Rush as well. I love Hi-Fi Rush. You can tell that a lot of the visuals from that game stems a lot. Like a lot of the influences stem from Fooly Cooly and Jet Set Radio. Two of my most favorite medias out there. I love Fooly Cooly. Specifically Season 1. Season 2 and 3 were alright, and I have yet to see Grunge, but I would love to watch that one if I ever get the chance. Even if it is a massive disappointment. You're the one picking, Cereza. At some point in the future, I plan to stream Mad World. I'm going to hook up my Wii so that I can be able to have it on my monitor and then stream that game at some point in the future. Because Mad World was a great game and it was my introduction to Platinum Games. as hell. Just swishity swishity bamboosh. Always with his get out of jail free cards. There we go. Dead. You really should play Mad World. It's fun. I have my copy here and it's the one signed by Steve Blum. Hold on, let me see. found it. I love it. <laughs> like he signed it in red ink. When I showed, when I met Steve Blum at the Florida Supercon, I pulled out Mad World and he made, he goes, oh, I got it. And then he went and grabbed a red pen just to sign this in red. That's when you know, like Steve Blum is the absolute Chad. Absolutely based. But yeah, no, eventually I'm going to be playing Mad World here. It'll be a lot of fun. Like with the Wii mode and Nunchuck too. So you're going to be seeing like me awkwardly like flailing around and whatnot. <laughs> okay, uh, Zeresa, pick your bus. I got to refill my, um, I got to refill some water, but I'll do that in the uh, next round. 
Rodan is OP, yeah. It ain't called Rodan for nothing. They they really just wanted to make a bow and arrow weapon, which is pretty cool. I feel like they could have made it better. Like, I still believe that the way they could have made a really good bow and arrow weapon is by basing it off one of the characters from Mortal Kombat who uses a bow and arrow, where he fights with a bow and arrow, but he uses the bow like a staff. So you can swing the bow like a staff, like a regular weapon. Like, you have Bayonetta holding a bow, that's a staff. So when you mash the button, she'll do like her attacks like if it was a sword. But if you hold the weapon, then she grabs the, the stick and turns it into a bow and then shoots. I feel like that would have been a better way to make Kafka. Where it's a bow staff that turns into a bow and arrow when you hold down the buttons. I feel like that could have been a much better way to make Kafka work. As a matter of fact, I kept saying that Kafka should return in 3 if they were willing to go down that route, but they never did. Yeah, it's only in the stinger where she uses it as a melee weapon, which kind of sucks. Ah, oh, Grace and Glory again. Here we go. You know the rules. Try to launch him into the air when we're in which time. It's the only way to prop them up. There we go. Nicely done. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. You gotta launch Grace and Glory into the air. Because, oddly enough, they're the only enemies you can air juggle properly in uh, Bayonetta 2. One of the few enemies you can properly air juggle. Which makes it all the weirder knowing that you couldn't do that in the first game. Makes me wonder why they turned it around. But okay, enough complaining. <laughs> um, hmm. Who should we fight against? Actually, I love fighting against Valor. He's actually fun. Ah, damn, I got hit by his body. And he's dead. Nice. Cool. 
That's how you do it, man. Oh yeah, that's right! Astral Chain had a bow and arrow! Yeah! Now that you bring it up, there were definitely a lot of great ideas with that weapon. Okay. Oops. Sorry, I hit yes on this. Oh no, wait, I'm running back on a menu. Okay. So, who else is left? Who wants to join up in this stream? We're already reaching the end of the stream. Well, I wouldn't say the end of the stream. I could definitely go for just a little bit longer. It's already been two and a half hours since I've been streaming. So, maybe another... 20 minutes I can stream, so that means uh, room for two more players. The question is, who wants to join? Somebody go balder? I know on Twitter, um, Ixbrex, or Ixbran I think his name was, I hope I'm, I'm pronouncing his name correctly, he requested I play as uh, Rodan, not Rodan, as Balder. The thing is, I'm not very good as Balder, so I apologize if I'm skipping out on the opportunity to play as him. Yeah, Flight Shift, it do be your turn. So let me know when you are ready. In the meantime, let me go ahead and set up my character. As a matter of fact, I'm going to change your outfit. Let's have her go... Samus, because we have yet to see Metroid Prime 4, so I'm going to pretend this is Metroid Prime 4 for a little while. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, no, that Link costume is definitely busted. Found your flight. Forgot to refill my water. <laughs> I'll get that when I finish the stream. Come on, flight shift. There you go. Let's go rando. Sure. <laughs> He's my go-to boss, so why not? <laughs> Link and Samus with their chain chops. It couldn't get any more Nintendo if you tried. Baldur and Rodan should have been bonus characters for a single player. I agree. The real problem is they don't have the same traversing abilities like Bayonetta does. She's able to wall jump and jump off areas. So some areas would have to be remodeled to make it work with Rodan and Baldur. And admittedly, they did find a way to make Rodan playable in Bayonetta 3 by just having him be a straight-up demon slave. Which I thought was a pretty cool way of making it work. It gave me hopes that we could have had Baldur as a demon slave as well, but we never got that. 
But yes, I do agree. We should have had Baldur and Rodan be playable in the single player mode. At the very least, like a special section. Like in um like in um the witch trials. That would have been a pretty good idea. Oh my god, this poor robot. I don't think we gave him a chance to do anything. Okay, now he's actually fighting back. He'll be dead in a few seconds though. Oh wow, okay, I actually took a lot of damage there. Jesus, okay, I, I need to actually play good for a change. Sorry about that. Balder, Angel Slave, would have been sick. Yeah, yeah, wouldn't it? Nah, no roll down. We could leave that for last, though. Labelaz in a guest appearance. Thank goodness he doesn't have the freeze ability here. I wasn't even aiming for a pure platinum there. Wow, not bad. Imagine controlling temporarily uh, Eustadia. I don't know how to pronounce their names. I always forget. <laughs> that would be so freaking sick that you could control those uh, creatures. That would be a certain. That would definitely be an, an amazing turnaround. We get free dunks here, by the way. Make them count! Dunk! Dunk! Well, maybe not Dunky would work here because of the awkward shape of this boss. Okay, no Dunky for the time being. Just straight up battling. Oh, wow. Oh my god, please, please revive me! Okay, I'll make sure not to die here. Dead. Nice. I forgot some of these bosses can be really fast. My reflexes are not as good as they used to be back then. I'm reaching that age where I'm no longer good at video games. Oh no. Help me, Jesus. 
Up to you if you want to fight against uh, the Umbran sisters. <laughs> Although I really do love, um, I really do love Little King Zero. He's adorable. I should really go back and finish my Little King Zero stream that I had started ages ago. I do not want to die. Okay, I gotta make sure not to die. Thanks for catching the stream, my friend. Always a pleasure to have uh, viewers enjoy this. Oh no! <laughs> Simultaneous death. The worst kind of death. Oh god. <laughs> Shall we try again? <laughs> Our chain chops are still alive though. I'm down for a rematch. <laughs> Let's try it again. I know I could do better than this. <laughs> yes, let's continue. Let's continue. We got it. We got to see this all the way to the end. Yeah, no, I, I deliberately added a delay to the stream so that the um, so that the quality of the stream can be a little better. It seems like the Valiants dunked us. <laughs> that was their revenge. Oh wait, what? I thought we could do it again. What happened? All right, let's try that again. I promise we'll do better. But I have a question though, like after this, who else is willing to join up on this stream? Because I think after flight shifts uh, run i might call it a i might call it a i might call it there that's what i mean to say <laughs> yeah go for it go for it go for broke i'm going to sit up for this <laughs> yeah and already i take damage of course i am very good at video games So good at video games. <laughs> Try it again. Again. And you bailed out. Uh, 
So, what are you thinking? <sighs> so, oops, hold on. I, that, I did not mean to do that. Sub ENTR supremacy. Yeah. Bow down to the lizard. Um. To tell you the truth, though, I am getting a little bit tired. Oh, you got disconnected? Ooh. Yeah, or you know what? I'm down for one more try. I am down for one more attempt. If we fail this attempt, it's over. This is it. Win, lose, this will be the last uh, run. Okay? And in order to make this count... Hold on. Let's see. Because the problem with Rakshasa is I gotta be up close. So instead, I'm swapping over to Scarborough Fair with the earrings. Let's do that. Alright, we can do this. For real, for real. You don't need to. Like, it's up to you if you want to. The problem is more just me playing too close to some of these enemies. Since weapons like Shuraba and Kafka require you to do that. So I picked out my favorite weapon that allows me to play from any position I want to be in. Of course, with Sampientia, it's a little different because you're forced to use the Umbran armor. So with that fight, it's just difficult because my reaction is way off because I am not too familiar when it comes to fighting against Sampientia. I don't usually fight against him all the time. So I always forget his pattern and attacks. And sometimes some of his attacks don't even look like attacks because you have his giant head right in front of you and he's just bopping up and down. So I'm just trying to figure out which one of those bops is the attack. You having troubles there, man? What's going on? Ah, okay, here we go. Let's do this. Hold on. Sorry, because I'm messing with a little device here. Okay. Let's start it off easy by fighting against my favorite boss. He's always a fun one to fight against. All right, I'm going to focus. There we go, nice! Okay, so far, so good. <laughs> I'm really happy you guys are enjoying this stream. This is the one thing I've been wanting to do for a very long time. I've never had the chance to sit down, relax, and just focus on doing a Tag Climax stream. It was something I had promised months ago, but you know, things just come and go. Holy frame drops, Batman. Yeah, no kidding.
nice. I forget that when you double jump, you actually get the the um, the Samus spin, which actually does damage. Are you on the um, Are you on the Switch Lite by any chance? Maybe that's why you're getting um, frame drops. Up to you on what you want to do with the difficulty. Makes no difference to me, because I am focused. Nice! Woo, boy! That was nuts! Which one was this one? Oh, the one where you're flying! You know what? I'll take this fight. Oh, you're on tabletop. Okay, yeah, that might explain some things. Because on tabletop, I know that Bayonetta 2 kind of struggles. dead. Very nice. I took damage there, though. I'm so mad about that. <laughs> oh, I am getting a little tired. I mean, not too tired. Just enough where it's like I really do gotta get up and walk. Sure. Let's battle against this dude.
Gotcha, I gotcha, I gotcha. Hold on. Ah, nah. His body is too big and bulky. There we go. One more verse. We got this. We got this. What will be the best fight to end this on? We already did a Rodan battle. Let's see. Hmm. No, not that one. Uh, hmm. We already did Lopter. No, that's Acer. I'm sorry. We could battle against Lopter as a finale. We did label loss. You know what? Let's do our uh, let's do our Rune. I promise, I'm gonna give it my best shot. I know I'm putting it at the highest difficulty, but god damn it, I want to end it on a good note. And in order to do that, we need to raise the stakes, because it'll make the payoff all the better. I'm so sorry. Well, you can't win them all. Can't win them all. <laughs> it was fun, though. I don't mind ending it like that. As disappointing as that is, we had a lot of fun. <laughs> Good games, man. Good games. All right. That will do it. For real, for real. If there was anyone else that wanted to join, uh, I am so sorry. You guys can uh, come back next week. And hopefully I'll be able to uh, stream more of this stuff. I want to try to make it where on a regular schedule I can stream more tag climaxes. It's not a promise though, because since I am living on my own, I definitely want to try to find more time to do the things that I need on my own. But during the weekdays, absolutely, I will be doing more single-player streams. You know, like in the evening when I got nothing else to do once I get back from work and all that sort of thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> ah, man. I'm more grateful that you all wanted to show up here, you know? I'm really grateful for that. You know, these streams would mean nothing if I didn't, if I didn't have anyone to play with. You know what I mean? Ah. But yeah, I definitely need a break here. Ah, that was fun. Let's see if I can get those friend requests. It is so weird that it doesn't let me. It's, it's really weird. It doesn't really um load up for me. A communication error through friend requests. What the fuck, man? That is weird. Like, okay, it shows, like, all my recent friends. But yeah, we're good on that then. Well, that was fun. That was definitely fun. <laughs> there really isn't much else I can say here. All I'll say is um, in the coming days, I'm going to be uploading more video content. I definitely want to get to finishing off all those Bayonetta 2 Pure Platinum videos that I have slept on for a very long time. And then eventually I'll start doing Bayonetta 3 Pure Platinum videos. Um, as for what to stream, during the weekdays, I will be focusing on multiplayer, I mean, not multiplayer, single player games. There's a few games that I have in my list that I would love to cover from Hi-Fi Rush to Evil West. You know, those are games I would love to share with you guys. The thing that sucks, though, is that 
anytime I try to stream something that's not Bayonetta related, I barely get any views out of that. I mean, when I was streaming Pizza Tower, I only had like one person watch the stream. You know, that's kind of the burden when it comes to streaming other games that are outside of my comfort zone. But I'd rather mess around with the games that I like rather than trying to play games that other people expect me to play. And as for Stellar Blade, because I know a lot of people have been asking about that, I will try and get around to getting a PS5 so that I can play Stellar Blade. I know it's not exactly the smartest idea to get a whole new console just to play one game, but the curiosity is killing me. I really do want to try Stellar Blade to see if it's as good as everyone says it is. Because I know a lot of people are very curious to see what my opinion is on that game. And I'm certain that if I say something bad about it, the Stella Blade fans will hunt me down and gut me like a fish. <laughs> oh, well. We'll see how it all goes. But until then, this is Seth saying stay wonderful, my friends. Till next time. Adios. Seventy bucks. Yeah, that is the only thing that's keeping me away from playing the game. It's super expensive. But all right, whatever. We'll talk about that another time. I'm off. Later, bros. I know that you'll be back. <laughs> <laughs>